Hello, my name is Daniele C. Rosano, image engineer at Filmlet. In this short video, we will look at some minor improvements relating to the color management and image engineering in Baselight version V6. Let's jump right into it. First improvement is a new type of scope. In the vector scope view, you will find next to the legacy vector scopes, the typical XY and UV chromaticity scopes, as well as Filmlight's RG scopes. Here you will find a new scope called AB. This will plot the AB plane from our new color model EAB. Some of the new tools express their use interface controls in this new color space. It is perceptually meaningful and should give you a more intuitive view on the color distributions of your images. And if you go to X-grade, for example, you will see that X-grade's UI is expressed in the same way. So edits in X-grade are directly reflected on the scopes. EAB is not a physical space, so a display is not a triangle shape, but this pizza slice shape. But it should give a more perceptual, meaningful view, especially for creative and subjective edits. Chromogen, for example, expresses its operation also in that space. So you should see a good correlation of the modification and the scope. Next topic is TKMV3, a new improved display rendering transform. It represents a minor update to TKMV2. And if we look what it does visually, let's compare two cursors. One we rendered the image with TKMV2 and one with TKMV3. If we flip between the two, we can see that the overall contrast and color rendering is very similar. Only the deepest shadows and saturated bright colors are rendered slightly different. TKMV3 allows for a bit more highlight saturation, especially in the yellow and greens. We reduce the desaturation because now with Chromogen you have greater control on the highlight bleaching in the stack. So TKMV3 shapes less, leaving more room for Chromogen. Also the highlights render between SDR and HDR benefits from this a bit. For live action, you will barely feel a difference. For animation content, TKMV3 makes it easier to produce vivid colors. We adapted some of our existing looks for TKMV3 and added a new look, which is the C307RE 2022. This look is mimicking the look of the RE Reveal DRT within the TKM framework. It is helpful if RE Reveal was used on set. If you compare the look with the standard 100 nit Reveal DRT, you will notice a slight color difference. It is not exactly a match to the 100 nits DRT. The reason for this is that in V6 the camouflage looks do not only target the 100 nit version of a color rendering but also attributes to the HDR rendering. What we do is we create an intermediate state between the 1000 nit and the 100 nit version of the DRT family and we are matching the look in this intermediate state. The camouflage look bridges the color differences between SDR and HDR for a given look. It is a match in between SDR and HDR. This means the look works good for both. SDR and HDR. We also updated our working space definition eGamut, now called eGamut2. Again, this is a small minor change, which should not feel unfamiliar to colorists and pipelines used to eGamut. The main reason is compatibility with the new RE Alexa 35 camera. The new RE White Gamut 4 has a slightly wider green primary. And if we change back to the old eGamut, we can see that RE White Gamut is slightly outside of eGamut. That would normally be not a problem if RE White Gamut 4 would be a camera gamut because you would never reach the corner of the gamut due to the large overlap of the spectral sensitivities in those wavelengths. But RE White Gamut 4 can be thought of more as an encoding space. The camera actually reach very easily the green corner. If you would use legacy tools like video grade or film grade on that footage in eGamut, we could produce undesirable effects like noise and solarization. To avoid this for legacy tools, eGamut 2 is just a nudge bigger to encode all the camera values inside of eGamut 2. But the grading response should not feel any different to the old eGamut working space. Again, only for legacy tools. It is more a mechanical than a creative change. Okay, let's move on. Chromatic adaptation transform. Let's add the color space journey to the workspace. For these shots, we are in, a in an ACES workflow. ACES requires for different IDTs different chromatic adaptation transform. A chromatic adaptation transform, short CAT or simply CAT, defines the way how white points are mapped within a color space conversion. In case the white point of the two color spaces are different, 
Because ACES is defined with a D60 white point and most camera color spaces define a D65 white point, chromatic adaptation is almost always needed in an ACES workflow. And there are minor numerical differences between the different CAD methods. In Baselight V6, under the advanced setting of the color management settings, you can choose the CAD algorithm now. We can force Baselight to use Bradford or, or CIE CAD 2 And while I change this, you can see that this is more or less an academic exercise. Visually, this makes no difference. In order to be fully compatible with ACES, we added the ACES dynamic mode. Baselight will now dynamically change the CAD based on the ACES rules. For example, for red, it uses the Bradford CAD. Ari specifies the CIE CAD 2 you can see Basel will dynamically switch CAD algorithms depending on the circumstances. Practically, this setting only applies if you have a non-D65 working space. If we change the workflow to T-Log T-Cam, we can see that this setting does not change anything because all color spaces have the same white point. If you do not see the CAD in the color space journey, this means no CAD is applied. For all non-ACES workflows, it is a good idea to stick to CIE CAD 2 and for ACES, you should choose ACES Workflow Dynamic. The scene templates in V6 also reflect these recommendations. As a side note, this setting does not influence the white point handling in the mastering color space. Staying in the ACES world, ACES defined a reference gamut compression algorithm. In this image, we have a bit of colors outside of the spectral locus. One way of dealing with this image is to apply gamut compression. We have gamut compression in Baselight for a long time, but now the Academy has also defined a gamut compression. That algorithm is very similar to our original gamut compression. But if you need to match the gamut compression in an ACES pipeline, you can select which one to use. You have three options. Filmlight is the one you know. The ACES reference, which implements exactly the ACES defined algorithm. If you want to, you can switch to ACES variable to be able to tweak the parameters behind the ACES gamut compression. Lastly, let's have a look at contrast-aware scaling algorithms. This topic follows me personally over a decade, and I'm happy that finally we can resolve it in a general way here in Baselight. So what is it about? Let's look at an image which involves scaling. You see we have a transform in that stack here. As soon as we scale, a scaling algorithm is involved, and there are many different ones. What you can see hopefully is that most of the scaling algorithms produce artifacts at high contrast edges when dealing with scene referred data. These artifacts are produced by the sharpening components of the scaling algorithm. You can avoid those artifacts, for example, using a scaling algorithm without sharpening components like the fixed Gaussian algorithm. But as a drawback, the image is quite soft. So we can have a sharp image with artifacts or an unsharp one. How did we deal with this in the past? Well, there is another workaround. We can change the color space we apply the scaling algorithm in. This is the native setting, which will apply the scaling algorithm in the working color space instead of a linearized version. But this requires a logarithmic working space. And over time, we will pivot away from logarithmic working color spaces. So this is only a short term solution. But it seems to heal the problem. It gets rid of the artifacts and still allow for a sharpening. It seems fine. But this workaround has also quite a few disadvantages. It does not maintain the energy levels in the image. We can, we can visualize this here. We have an image with thin white titles. And now we scale down the image a lot, just to make the effect more obvious. We can see that we lose all of the energy in the highlights. The text almost disappears. And to prove that this is caused by the color treatment, I can change it back to linearized and voila, the text is back. The title has its proper energy level. In a more real world example here, we have fine motion graphics comped on top of the background. And if we scale the graphics, we can see still quite a difference between the linearized and the native color treatments. These subtleties often cause motion graphics to not match their original intent. So while native scaling helped us in the past, it also has some drawbacks. The general solution is a new color treatment method called linearized contrast aware. This option maintains the energy level but get rid of the artifacts introduced by legacy color treatment. With this algorithm we can have both proper energy levels and artifact free edge behavior. As you can see in this example or in this example, proper energy preserving. It is also the new default in any factory scene template. 
It works with any scaling algorithm that has sharpening components. If you choose a scaling algorithm without sharpening components, this option will not be available because it is not needed. But most of the typical scaling algorithms have sharpening components. We expose a slider to control the contrast aware behavior, but we balance it so it can be left to 1.0 for all cases. I hope this short video was informative and see you the next time.